Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with or boost control in our Megasquirt 3 firmware. So we had a previous training video, we covered Boost Control in our Microsquirt and our Megasquirt 2 firmware. Now we move into the Megasquirt 3, we find that there is a ton more programming details and a lot more flexibility for our Boost Control. We have the ability to do a low and high Boost Control. We also find that we can do gear-based, speed-based, time-based, as well as using a driver adjustable trim pot to have multiple boost targets or boost levels in cabin adjustable, I'm going to be going over all these different boost control strategies we have available so you understand how they're going to work and if you want to implement them on your vehicle, you're going to be able to do it properly. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at working with our boost control in our Megasquirt 3 firmware build. So in our previous boost control training video, we took a look at our Megasquirt 2 and Microsquirt firmware. I actually have my Tuner Studio open here with a Megasquirt 2 firmware file. We jump into Boost Advanced here. We can look at our Boost Control settings. We can see we've went through all this information here. A lot of what we find is gonna be repetitive in our Megasquirt 3 for some of the setup, but we're gonna find the control is completely different. We're gonna have a ton more options. We also can see in our Boost Advanced here, we only have two different tables to work with. Now let's jump into our Megasquirt 3 firmware here and see the differences. We can see as soon as we click on our Boost, we can see we have our Boost Control settings here to deal with, and then we have a ton of control settings and tables here to deal with. So we are gonna have a ton of flexibility, just like we find when we get into this Megasquirt 3 for almost any of the features, there's a lot more programming and details to cover. So let's jump into our boost control settings right here. And let's talk about everything so we can make sense of how this is gonna be working. So I'm gonna be going over some of these settings here. If you're jumping into the video and you don't have a Megasquirt 2 and you haven't watched the previous training video, you can just follow along here. If you have went through that Megasquirt 2 training video, you can skip some of the beginning of the video here. I'm going to be going over, again, some of the basic detail settings and setup, but then we're going to be getting into the more specific control routines. So starting off at the top here under Boost Control Enabled, I'm going to go here and turn it on. Then we're going to find we have our solenoid frequency range. Now we have two choices here. We have a slow and we have a mid. So in this situation, we'll start off with a slow and let's talk about the programming for that. We can see we have our solenoid and our pin location. So the pin location here, we're just going to select one of these pins that we have available on our pretty extensive list. Our frequency here is gonna be proprietary to the solenoid we're trying to control. Typical three port and four port boost solenoid, we will find here that 19 to 26 hertz will be sufficient. Now we also have another option here for the solenoid frequency range. We can choose mid, we're gonna specify a new pin, and then we have a different frequency set we have to work with, all the way from 12 up to 1,021 hertz. Now, typically speaking again, if a three or four port boost solenoid, We'll be operating here between 20 to 30 hertz, so we'll have some options there to select if we need. I'll go back to slow because that's usually what I go and use when I work with the boost control. Now we also find our output polarity. This will either have our normal